These are the sneaker releases that you need to know about in August 2024. This is Sitter's Cell. But first, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Arbit. Arbit is a free app that allows you to compare the prices of all the different resale marketplaces for sneakers in one place. For example, I've been looking to buy the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low Canaries, and I've been going through all of the resale platforms to try and find the best price possible. And going back and forth between all the different apps is so frustrating because it takes a while. Sometimes you forget what the price was on one app and you have to go back. And a lot of times I'll check a couple places but then forget to check another place and that other place is a place that had the best price. It sucks. But Arbit makes my sneaker buying life 10 times easier because it aggregates all of the different prices for whatever size you're looking for of whatever sneaker you're looking for on one page. So for the Travis Scotts, I can see the price in my size of size 9 on eBay, StockX, Kixify, Kix Crew, and Goat. Not only that, they also provide a rating for the price of each website so you know if you're getting a great deal or not. And if there's a certain shoe that you're looking for in a specific size, go to that shoe on the Arbit app and click watching and it'll notify you whenever the price drops. One feature I really love though is Arbit Insight, which tracks the price of the sneakers that you're looking for. And it allows you to see what the price has been doing over the last couple months and what they think the price might do in the future. So it really helps inform your buying decisions so you have a better idea of when the best time to buy a sneaker is. And of course, when you're finally ready to buy that sneaker, all you need to do is go to the sneaker on the app and then click on the price that's best for you and it automatically takes you to that app to buy the sneaker. Seriously, I love Arbit. It's definitely worth checking out. And if you guys want to do that, make sure to click the link in the top of the description below. And once again, huge thank you to Arbit for sponsoring today's video. Let's start things off with two pairs that don't have specific release dates yet. And the first one of those pairs is the Adidas AE1 Low Mural. I love the AE1 and I love the AE1 Low. They're both incredible sneakers, but this mural colorway is a colorway that I've been waiting for since I first saw leaks like six months ago. This shoe is a black and pink AE1 Low with the black being the upper of the shoe and the pink being the TPU overlay and the outsole. And I just feel like this shoe was made for this colorway. I wish they had launched the low tops in this colorway, but to be fair, people probably would have bought this one and just none of the other AE1 Low colorways. So I guess I get it, but still, it's just such a perfect colorway for summer. And I feel like the AE1 Low is so easy to rock casual. So this is a pair that I'm definitely trying to pick up just for the toe, just for the casual wear. Now we don't have an official word on the price point yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be just like all of the other AE1 lows, which is $110, which is insanely cheap for what you're getting. And again, unfortunately, no release date, but it is supposed to drop sometime in August. And in my opinion, this shoe might actually end up selling out. The other shoe that we're covering that doesn't have an official release date yet is the Futura Nike Jam. Now, I didn't know this, but the Nike Jam is specifically designed for breakdancing, and 2024 is the first year that they're going to have breakdancing in the Olympics. So I guess it kind of makes sense that this shoe is dropping in August during the Olympics, or partially during the Olympics. And it also makes sense to use one of the biggest collaborators of the year, Futura, on this collaboration to hopefully give this shoe some hype. Now, as someone who's never attempted breakdancing, and even if I did, I'd look like a, an idiot, so I'm never going to try, uh, it is a good looking sneaker. I really like the paneling on the upper, and I like the fact that they they've added some Futura mural elements inside the sock liner of the shoe. I kind of wish there was more details like that on the outside of the shoe as well, but it looks like it's just on the inside of the shoe. Either way, very clean, very wearable. But I'll be real, I have no idea what the hype is going to be like on this shoe. I don't know what the price of this shoe is going to be, presumably between $100 and $200. I don't think it would be more than that because that would be insane, and I also don't think it's going to be cheaper than that. But uh, who knows? Obviously, the release date is unknown at this time. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a shock drop. And if I had to give it a rating of sit or sell, I'm kind of leaning towards sit because even though it's a relatively hyped up collaboration in terms of Futura, I just think it's going to be like one of those Union LA collaborations that they've been doing recently where it's an okay collaboration on a sneaker that no one really cares about. So because of that, I'm going to give this shoe a sit, although I do think there is potential for it to sell out if it is stupid limited. So if you are a break dancer and you want to grab this shoe, just stay on top of the release information because I really don't know what the hype is going to be like on the sneaker or even when it's going to drop. But moving on to August 1st, we've got the Nike Sabrina 2 in the USA colorway. I'm not going to lie, the August sneaker release dates are filled with Olympic themed sneakers, which makes sense. The Olympics only happen every two years, I guess, if you count the Winter and the Summer Olympics. And Sabrina Ionescu sneaker is honestly pretty fire. I really like the first one. I really like the second one, although it does look pretty similar to the first one. And this red colorway has some Kobe vibes to it. I like it a lot. Now the Sabrina 2 United, I think is the actual official name of the shoe, comes in for a retail price of $130. And I don't know if this shoe is gonna sell out because usually the colorways of basketball sneakers that sell out are the very first colorways because those are the limited ones, the launch colorways. I don't know if this shoe is gonna sell out. I would lean towards probably not just because most basketball sneakers nowadays are not selling out. So because of that, even though I think this shoe is fire, I'm still gonna give it a sit. Moving on to August 2nd, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Strawberry Waffle. It's not often that the name of a sneaker does a really good job of describing exactly what it looks like, and this shoe looks 
exactly like a strawberry waffle. The shoe comes in a tan suede upper with a waffle hit on the midfoot and of course red accenting around the shoe. And from what I can tell, I don't think it's a collaboration. I think it's just a wacky Nike Tunk Low colorway, which I gotta be honest, I'm here for. I love when they do like kind of wild things on shoes that aren't particularly collaborations. It's cool, it's different. To me, it means that they actually still get excited about making new colorways of sneakers, so I'm into it. Pricing wise, the shoe comes in at 125 and in my opinion, even though it's a clean looking sneaker, I'm sure they're gonna create a bunch of them. So because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Next up on August 3rd, we've got the Fear of God 1 Basketball in Sesame Carbon. I'm genuinely surprised that the Fear of God 1 Basketball is not a more popular sneaker. I always thought that this shoe would consistently sell out in every colorway that it released in, but it seems like the only colorways that it actually sells out in are the ultra limited colorways. It feels like sneaker hype is just not there anymore. That said, just because a sneaker isn't hype doesn't mean it's a bad sneaker, and I still really like the Fear of God 1 Basketballs, and this Sesame colorway with this black, or I guess carbon toe, is pretty clean. I really do feel like these are more lifestyle sneakers than basketball sneakers, but hey, it is what it is. Maybe the reason they don't really sell out is because they're so expensive. I mean, they come in at a retail price of $250. Now, I couldn't tell you whether this shoe is gonna be limited or not, and because of that, it's hard to say whether this shoe will sit or sell, but based on the previous releases of Fear of God 1 Basketballs, I have a feeling this shoe is probably gonna sit. So because of that, giving this shoe a sit. Then rounding off August 3rd, we've got the Air Jordan 6 Olympic. This is one of the most iconic Air Jordan 6 colorways. Originally released back in 2000 for the Sydney Olympics, this shoe is one of those shoes that you think of when you think of the Air Jordan 6. Unlike the 2012 re-release of this shoe, this new 2024 version is supposed to be as true to the original as possible, and because of that, it features the OG midsole. I mean, based on these images, the leather looks really nicely tumbled. I'm excited about it. I know there's not a lot of hype around the sneaker, even though this sneaker used to be one of the most sought after shoes of all time. I still think it's a great looking shoe and I look forward to grabbing this shoe under retail on resale sites. And actually, if you do want to grab this shoe or any of the other shoes that I talked about in today's video, make sure to check them out through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. But hype aside, this shoe is just a clean pair of Air Jordan 6s. You've got a navy blue upper accented by white overlays and red hits. It's clean, it's wearable, and whether you like the Air Jordan 6 or not, you can't deny that the color blocking on this shoe is very clean. Now, as I already sort of alluded to when I said I was gonna buy this shoe for under retail, I just don't see this Olympic 6 selling out or more so for that reason I'm giving this shoe a sit. Hold up, have you subbed to my tech channel yet? Do you even know I have a tech channel? Well, if you didn't, I have a tech channel and I drop reviews there all the time of all the latest tech. If you guys are interested in that, make sure to check it out. We are literally under a thousand people away from a hundred thousand subscribers. It's wild. If you guys wanna be the hundred thousand subscriber, there's no giveaway or anything. You could just be that guy, which would be amazing. Make sure to subscribe by clicking the link below Arbit in the description below. Seriously, check it out, link below. Moving on to August 5th, we've got the Nike Kobe 4 Pro Tro Gold Medal. As you probably guessed from the name of this sneaker, if you didn't know about this shoe when it first released, back in 2009, this is an Olympic themed sneaker. And it first released in honor of the 2008 Redeem team, and now it's releasing once again in 2024 for the Paris Olympics. This time around though, it's a Kobe 4 Pro Tro. The shoe comes with gold metallic hits on the toe and on the heel of the sneaker, a white midfoot section, and a black Nike swoosh outlined in red, and it's a very clean pair of Nike Kobe 4s. I'm definitely gonna be going for a pair for myself. Unfortunately though, Kobe's are still pretty difficult to get, which means I'm probably gonna have to end up paying a resale for this shoe, but that obviously means that I'm giving this shoe a sell. Continuing on to August 6th, we've got two different Nike Air Max SNDRs, one in Hyper Pink and one in Volt. Back when this shoe released in 1999, it was a very futuristic looking sneaker. And to be fair, even in 2024, it still looks very futuristic, at least what futuristic looked like in the early 2000s. I've never really been a fan of this colorway, and even though this shoe was relatively hyped up when it re-released last month in like that sunset colorway, I just don't know if the hype is gonna remain there for these other two colorways that are dropping in August. I mean, the pink's not bad, the neon green colorway I could do without. I just don't see myself spending $180 on this shoe, especially when last month's colorway is selling for under retail online. I just don't see either of these colorways selling out. So because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Also dropping on the same day, we've got the Nike Zoom Vomero 5 SE in bright crimson and black. I'm a huge fan of the Nike Zoom Vomero 5. I think it's super comfortable. I love a lot of the colorways that they've put out. And this black and red colorway, while not something I personally would rock on a regular basis, it's still pretty good looking. When the Vomero 5 started to re-release again back in like 2021, each colorway was selling out, but as they started to pump out more and more colorways, the colorways ended up sitting on shelves. And I feel like unless it's like a crazy limited colorway or a colorway that's really popular, they just don't sell out. And as clean as this colorway is, I just don't think it's one of those like crazy popular colorways. So for that reason, I'm giving the shoe a sit. 
Rounding off August 6th, we've got the Their Skateboard Nike SB Dunk Low. This shoe is a collab between Nike SB and Their Skateboarding's founder, Jeff Chung. The shoe comes in a black upper accented by dark gray overlays that have Jeff's artwork embroidered into it in white. You've got a dark green Nike swoosh as well as a dark green rubber outsole that actually has Jeff's artwork printed onto it. You don't see that in outsoles a lot. And I actually think it's a really clean and subtle collaboration. Now, I'm not familiar with Jeff or Their Skateboarding personally because I don't really skateboard myself, but I do think he did a good job knocking out this collaboration and most likely because it is a Nike SB Dunk Low, it will be difficult to get. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. There's a lot of sneaker releases this month. Next up on August 7th, we've got the New Balance 991 V2 Brandied Apricot. This $250 pair of New Balances, yes, you heard that right, $250, comes in a really nice pink upper accented by a cream midsole and a gray outsole. You've got a super hairy suede, a premium looking mesh. New Balances in general tend to be pretty high quality sneakers. And I'm not gonna lie, this is a perfect summer colorway and it's ridiculously wearable. I don't know if the hype is still there for this particular shoe, especially at the price point of $250. You know, let me check the resale price right now. Hmm. It's reselling for like $300 on StockX. I mean, it is before the sneaker releases, but still, that's a lot of money. You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this shoe will sell out. I'm gonna give this shoe a sell. Also dropping on the 7th, we've got the women's Nike Dunk Low Olive Aura and Oil Green. This is an incredibly plush and pillowy looking pair of Nike Dunk Lows, and it's not because they padded this shoe more than a regular pair, it's because this shoe comes with like an incredible hairy suede all over the sneaker. The upper comes in a green suede, the Nike swoosh comes in a green suede, the overlays come in more of a nubuck material, but still kind of suede and it's just kind of a laid back pair of Nike Dunk Lows. Now it is retailing for a slightly higher price than other pairs of Nike Dunk Lows at 135 I do think it's going to be popular, but I don't know if it's going to be that popular. Popular, and so because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Continuing on with the seventh, we've got the women's Air Jordan 6 Pearl. This shoe is essentially a white suede pair of Air Jordan 6s with gold accents on the midsole and on the lace lock. It's simple, it's relatively subtle for a pair of Air Jordan 6s that features metallic gold. I actually don't mind it, but it does only come in women's sizing, so if you're a dude with larger feet, you won't be able to grab this one. Oh, I didn't notice that before. It's actually got like a super light icy teal outsole. That's kind of cool. It's definitely not a bad looking sneaker, but I just don't think there's really any hype behind it, so because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Next up, we've got the Nigel Sylvester Air Jordan 4 RM Driveway Gray. So Jordan brand decided to launch the brand new Air Jordan 4 silhouette, the Air Jordan 4 RM, with two different Nigel Sylvester colorways. We had the green colorway and this gray colorway called the Driveway Gray. Now this shoe essentially is an all dark gray pair of Air Jordan 4 RMs. It comes in like a dark gray suede and a dark gray TPU overlay. You've got a white midsole and then this little tiny red Nike swoosh towards the toe, which I'm not gonna lie, I actually kinda love. Of course, because this shoe is a Nigel Sylvester collaboration, it features the words bike and Air on the heel and most likely the hype for this pair will be the same sort of hype that we had for the dark green pair that released a couple weeks ago. Now, I didn't even realize there was a second Nigel Sylvester collab of the Air Jordan 4 RMs. I just thought they were releasing that one green colorway and then a bunch of GRs and that was that. But no, apparently we're getting a gray one and it's a good thing because I feel like the Air Jordan 4 RMs are not going to be that popular after the collabs sell out. I just did a full review on this pair of black and light bone RMs. If you guys want to check that out there will be a link at the top of the screen but right now like a month before they release they're under retail. So as good as the Air Jordan 4 RM is, I just don't think the hype is gonna be there for pairs that aren't collab pairs. And I shouldn't be saying all this now because we're gonna talk about some of the non-collab Air Jordan 4 RMs in a couple minutes. But either way, this Bike Air Nigel Sylvester Driveway Gray collaboration is priced at $150 and I do think that it will end up selling out. Moving on to August 9th, we've got the Stussy Nike LD1000. This collaboration retails for $110 and features a wide tan mesh upper with an embroidered pink Nike swoosh. Some other notable details are the suede on the heel and on the toe and the pink Stussy branding on the back of the shoe. I mean, talk about retro running sneakers. This is about as retro as it gets for running sneakers. And I've gotta be honest, it's got a cool, very simple look to it. Plus the colorway is kind of clean. Now I would not be surprised if this sneaker ended up selling out because Stussy has a lot of hype behind it and this silhouette definitely has a really cool vibe to it. So because of that, I'm gonna give this shoe a sell. After that, we've got the Nike SB Dunk Low Olympics. This shoe kind of has a safari vibe to it, primarily because of that dot pattern found on the overlays of the sneaker. But in addition to that, you also have blue hits and orange hits, and it's actually part of a larger Olympic pack. I really don't mind the way this shoe looks. It's only $125, and if I can grab a pair for retail, I might go for it. Now, while regular Nike Dunks are not as popular as they once were, and they don't really sell out the way that they once did, Nike SB Dunk Lows still are pretty popular and still tend to sell out. So because of that, I'm gonna give this shoe a sell. 
Finally, finishing off the ninth, we've got the return of a classic with the Nike KD4 Nerf. This Nerf collaboration first released back in 2011 and was one of the most popular sneakers of the decade. I mean, seriously, the Nerf KDs are like one of those iconic grail sneakers, especially that original box that it came in with the Nerf basketball hoop. It was sick. But as we've seen Nike do over the last couple of years, they've been bringing back some of their crazy PEs and some of those crazy limited collaborations that were going for thousands and thousands of dollars back in the day and releasing them as not GRs, but wider release limited pairs. Now according to Nike, the sneaker itself is exactly the same as it was back when it first released in 2011. However, the packaging for the sneaker is a little bit different. Now unfortunately, instead of that wild Nerf box, you now get a more standard Nike box, which isn't bad, it's just, you know, like part of that collaboration that made it so special was that Nerf box. Either way, still a classic sneaker, but I will be interested to see what happens when the shoe actually releases, because as we've seen with some of these crazy limited pairs that have gotten re-released, people just don't care about them anymore, because a lot of people got into sneakers after they first dropped. So because of that, I really don't know exactly what's going to happen with this $150 Nike KD4 release. I would not be surprised if it sold out, but I also wouldn't totally be surprised if it ended up sitting in some sizes. So because of that, I'm going to give this shoe a sell just because if you want to buy this shoe, try and grab it as soon as it releases because I don't know how long it's going to stick around, but who knows? It could sit. Then dropping on August 10th, we've got the Air Jordan 13 Midnight Navy. From what I can tell, this is a new colorway for the Air Jordan 13. You've got a white leather upper and Midnight Navy suede accents, but the newest detail on this shoe, the part that we've never had on an Air Jordan 13 before, is the gum outsole. And the rumors are true, I love gum outsoles, and I actually kinda dig the way this sneaker looks with the gum outsole. Now in my opinion, this colorway is super clean. It's not an OG colorway, but it's definitely a great colorway for back to school and for summer, although it is $200, which I feel like is a little bit too expensive for what you're getting. Now will this pair hit outlets? I'm not totally sure, but I also wouldn't be surprised. And because of that, I'm gonna end up giving this Air Jordan 13 Midnight Navy a sit. Also dropping on the 10th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Metallic Gold. Now this shoe is essentially a bread Jordan 1 that switches out the red details for metallic gold details. And to be honest, it's really not a bad looking sneaker and it actually ties in with the Olympics pretty well because it kind of matches up with like a gold medal. That being said, is it something that I would wear on a regular basis? Probably not. I just, I'm not a huge fan of gold on my sneakers. We'll scratch that. I don't mind gold on sneakers. It's just like that gold leather I don't really like. Regardless of my personal feelings about gold leather, it's still a good looking sneaker. I'm sure there are people out there who want to grab this shoe. And for $180, it's kind of a standard Air Jordan 1 price. But you may have noticed that this shoe is currently sitting on resale sites for under retail, which is wild to me, which usually means that the shoe doesn't really have any hype. And once the shoe actually releases, the price is probably going to drop even more. So if you want a pair of these, I would probably wait and grab it at the outlet or grab it online for cheaper than retail. So because of that, I'm definitely going to say that this shoe is going to end up sitting on shelves. Moving on to the 14th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 1 Low Oxidized Green. This is actually another gum bottom Air Jordan sneaker that I think is perfect for summer. It's obviously a low top Air Jordan 1, which again is perfect for the heat. You've got oxidized green accents on the Nike swoosh and on the sock liner. You've got that gum bottom and a leather upper. It's subtle and it's clean and it kind of has that Nike SB Air Jordan 4 color blocking to it, which some people might really like. But of course, will this shoe sell out? In my opinion, probably not. I haven't checked the resale price of this shoe, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was also under retail like the metallic golds that we just talked about. I feel like there's been a lot of sits in the beginning of the month, but the rest of August, man, it's crazy. Continuing on to August 15th, we've got the Adidas AE1 Low USA. Yet another Olympic themed sneaker. We've got the AE1 Low in almost entirely dark navy with some red accents kind of hidden between those little I don't know what's called them, honeycomb details. A very subtle accent, but it gives the shoe a cool effect. And of course, you've also got a red hit on the top of the toe. Now, although I said that mural colorway of the AE1 Lows would definitely sell out, I don't think this USA colorway has as much hype behind it. And I don't know if people are as excited about this colorway. So because of that, I'm gonna end up giving this shoe a sit. Dropping on the 16th, we've got the Grade School Air Jordan 3 Moto. This kid's exclusive Air Jordan 3 is inspired by Michael Jordan's love of motorsports. It features a black leather upper with a black elephant print that has these like metallic teal accents. But the most interesting detail of the shoe is the teal checkered flag found on the heel tab of the sneaker. Weirdly enough, I don't think I've ever seen Jordan brand do a pattern on the heel tab of the Air Jordan 3. Maybe they have but not like this. Now I can't say that I love the way that this sneaker looks, but I will say that this pattern is really interesting on the back of this shoe and it's something that maybe kids will love. Now price wise, it's not incredibly cheap. It comes in at $150, which to be fair is standard for grade school sneakers. And as we've seen with a lot of grade school exclusive sneakers, I just don't know if this shoe will end up selling out. So for that reason, I'm giving it a sit. Also dropping on the 16th, we've got three different colorways of the Museum Visitor A6 Gel Keanu 14s. 
So I'll be honest, I'm not familiar whatsoever with the imprint The Museum Visitor. I didn't even know they existed until I saw this collaboration, which I guess is kind of the point of collaborations to market a brand. But I will say as a fan of the A6 Gel Kayana 14s, these three colorways that are launching are all pretty clean. Speaking of these colorways, the three that are dropping are a white and blue, a black and gray, and a white and gold. And each one of them features a color matching tongue tag that I'm not sure if it's attached to the tongue or if it's attached to the laces. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but it's interesting and it's different. Now the price for each one of these colorways is $180 and I'm sure they're all very limited. And so even if they weren't collaborations, I wouldn't be surprised if all three of these colorways ended up selling out, but because they are collabs, they will definitely sell out. Dropping on August 17th, we've got the Nike Air Foam Posit 1 DMVs. So growing up in Baltimore, foam posits were always a shoe that everyone had on feet. And the fact that Nike is giving us specifically a DMV themed pair of foam posits means I might have to grab them. They come in a surprisingly clean cherry blossom pink colorway, it's sort of a washed out pink and I actually think it's fire. I really thought I was done buying foam posits so they brought back out the coppers, but I might have to grab these. Unfortunately, they're still priced at $240, which is so much money for a pair of foam posits. However, unlike the mid-2000s, foam posits are not as popular as they once were, and the price point is definitely prohibitive for a lot of people, so because of that, I would not be surprised if these shoes end up sitting, at least outside of the DMV area. Also dropping on the 17th, we've got the Air Jordan 11 Low Diffused Blue. This pair of Air Jordan 11 Lows comes with the medium blue, or I guess diffused blue patent leather panel around the bottom half of the upper. The rest of the upper comes in white ballistic nylon, you've got a white midsole and a cream colored outsole. And it's a surprisingly clean new colorway on the Air Jordan 11 Low. Now even though it's not a variation of or even an OG colorway, it is still a colorway that I think is perfect for summer and people still seem to love the Air Jordan 11 Low. So although I don't think this shoe is going to resell for anything, it is $190 and will probably resell for around $190. I do think that the diffused blue Air Jordan 11 lows will sell out. Moving on to the 21st, we've got the Air Jordan 4 RM Black Light Bone. So this is the GR that I was talking about when I was talking about the Nigel Sylvester Air Jordan 4 RMs. This is the colorway that, although it's clean and although it's a good shoe, I just don't know if it'll be hyped when it doesn't have a name attached to it. Now, like I mentioned before, I've already done a full review on this exact colorway of the shoe and genuinely, I think it's a good sneaker. I just don't know if the hype is gonna be there for this release because it's not a Nigel Sylvester bike air. That said, it retails for $150, which is cheaper than a standard pair of fours and I think the quality is just as good as a regular pair of fours. And I mean, if you're interested in trying it out, I definitely recommend trying it out. But like I said before, if it doesn't have a name attached to it, I don't know if the hype's there. So because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Dropping on the same day, we've got another 4RM. This time around, it's the Women's Air Jordan 4RM in oxidized green. This shoe is very similar to the Grandma's Driveway Bike Air Nigel Sylvester Air Jordan 4RM in that it's almost all green with a white midsole. But again, it's not a collaboration. So will this shoe do well? I don't know. Personally, I kind of doubt it. It does cost $150 like the other pair of RMs, and I still think it's a great pair of shoes, but I just don't think the hype is gonna be there. So because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. The next shoe dropping is one of the most anticipated pairs of sneakers of the entire year. And that of course is the Amo Manier Air Jordan 3 in black. So this shoe is the highly anticipated follow up to the original Amo Manier Air Jordan 3s, one of the most popular sneakers of all time. Obviously it's a black version of the shoe with some other minor colorway differences throughout the sneaker. But overall, it's an incredibly high quality shoe and I think they knocked it out of the park. I've already done a full review on this sneaker. So if you guys wanna check out my full in-depth thoughts, make sure to click the link at the top of this screen. But I'll tell you right now, this shoe is probably one of my favorite sneaker releases of the entire year. It's a little low key, it's a little bit quiet, but at the same time, man, it is clean. Now I understand that we do have a pair of Black Cement 3s releasing later this year, and it's gonna look very similar to this, but this shoe probably is gonna be a lot higher quality than that shoe. I mean, the tumbled leather on the upper is soft. The suede around the toe and around the heel of the shoe is really, really hairy. You've got this nice nubuck on the tongue and around the ankle area of the shoe. I just love it, man, it's crazy. And that quilted sock liner that you find in a lot of other Amo Manier collaborations is amazing. Not only that, the box that this shoe comes with is crazy. It's not like any other Amo Manier box that I've seen. I actually don't know where I put it. It's somewhere in here, but if you check out my review, you can see it. It kind of flips open like this. It's a whole new experience. It's crazy. Most likely it'll be very difficult to get just because of how popular the original collaboration was and the fact that this collaboration is also so clean. Unfortunately, if you are able to grab this shoe, the retail price is pretty high at $250, but I still think this shoe was absolutely worth it for that price. I paid 600 for this pair, so I think this shoe is at least worth 600. And in my opinion, the black Amo Manier Air Jordan 3s will absolutely sell out. 
Apparently dropping on the same day, we've got another colorway of the same collaboration, the Women's Air Jordan 3 Amamandier in Burgundy Crush. Now I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure if this second colorway is actually going to release on this day. I haven't seen many pairs floating around. It's reported on a couple sites that it is dropping on this day, but unlike this pair, I haven't seen any pairs in the resale market, so I wouldn't be surprised if this date is just wrong and it ends up releasing in a month or two. But just to cover all my bases, I'll talk about it now just in case it does end up releasing. So apparently this Burgundy Crush colorway is much more similar to the original Amamandier Air Jordan 3s and that it has a white leather upper. However, it switches out the gray suede details on the toe and on the heel for a burgundy suede. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't seen many, if any, actual images of this shoe. I've only seen renderings, so I don't 100% know what the shoe is going to entirely look like. And again, because of that, I kind of feel like the shoe is not going to release on the 21st, but if it does, this is what you can expect. And it's a good looking shoe. Apparently, it's a women's only release. It's going to be $250. And if it does drop, I definitely think it's going to sell out. But even if it doesn't, the black colorway is still releasing on this day, and this colorway is just absolutely fire. Moving on to August 23rd, we've got the Adidas Bad Bunny Gazelle Indoor Bonitos. So this is the second colorway that's dropping of the Bad Bunny Gazelle collaboration. And I've got to say, out of all of the Bad Bunny collaborations, this might be my favorite. The forums were my favorite, but these ones... I don't know, these are fire. And I don't mean this colorway in particular, I mean just the Gazelle collaborations. Both of these colorways are super clean and so different. Essentially what they did on this collaboration was change up the paneling of the Gazelle and kind of make it a mashup between the Samba and uh, maybe the handballs a little bit. They made the suede mudguard on the shoe off center, which I think is really cool. They also widened the sneaker compared to the regular Gazelle, so it fits a little bit wider. I just love the way it looks. It's super clean, it's pretty laid back. It's one of those if you know, you know style collaborations and I really like it a lot. This new colorway comes with the white leather upper, gray suede accents, and of course the black Adidas three stripes logo in the midfoot. And as with most Adidas Bad Bunny collaborations, it's got two separate tongues. On this particular collab, you can't really see the two separate tongues. Maybe if you flip this first one forward, I don't know if you can do that, but there we go. You've got an Adidas logo on the second tongue. Definitely one of my favorite collaborations of the year and a collab that I didn't expect to like this much. And for 140 bucks, it is priced pretty well. However, most likely it will end up selling out, so you'll have to pay resale for it. But the good news is for this Benito colorway, the second colorway, it shouldn't be as expensive on the resale market as the first colorway. And even that one isn't going for that much. It's going for like 200, 220. This one will probably go for like 180 or 190 based on what it's going for right now. But yeah, absolutely love this colorway. I love the Gazelle collaborations. They knocked it out of the park. And of course, I think the Bad Bunny Gazelle Indoor Benitos will end up selling out. Dropping on August 24th, we've got the Nike Kobe 9 Elite Pro Tro Halo. This shoe is dropping for the 10th anniversary of the Kobe 9 Elite, and it will actually be the first Kobe 9 Elite Pro Tro to drop. Now this shoe comes in an all-white halo colorway, which apparently is something that Nike and Vanessa Bryant are doing every single year to honor Kobe Bryant. And I've gotta say, it's a gorgeous looking pair of Kobe's. I was never really a fan of the Kobe 9 Elites, but in this white makeup, it seems to have this more premium tongue area with that sort of quilted leather. It looks incredible. I was actually talking to my friend Tom Stefanik recently, former sneaker YouTuber Tom Stefanik, about the Kobe 9, and, and he was saying that the Kobe 9 Elite is one of his favorite basketball sneakers of all time, and I think it probably is one of the most popular basketball sneakers of all time. Actually, that's hilarious. He's calling me right now. Yo, guess what? I'm, I'm filming a video right now, and I was literally yeah. talking about that conversation that we had two weeks ago, right as you called. <laughs> That's crazy. Wait, tell the people what you think of the Kobe 9 Elite. Kobe 9 Elite, what a time to be alive. How pivotal basketball sneakers were in the world of fashion back then. Like, you could throw on a pair of jeans, a t-shirt, and a pair of LeBron 9s. It was extremely stylish. Yeah, the Kobe 9s, incredible shoe. Absolutely incredible shoe. The Beethoven 9 Lows, maybe oh, true. one of the greatest Nike basketball creations of all time. Very true. I know, right? W would you cop? Would you grab? No, I don't. I mean, they're very cool. He literally called the right what I was talking about him. That's wild. But yeah, the Kobe 9 Elite, incredible sneaker. I definitely think a lot of people have nostalgia for this shoe. And of course, because it's a pair of Kobe's, I do think the hype is going to be crazy for this one. So even though it's $240, I definitely think that this shoe will end up selling out. Then rounding off August 24th, we've got the Air Jordan 4 White Thunder. So this shoe is the latest variation on the popular Thunder 4s, which obviously came in black nubuck and yellow accents. Since that shoe released back in 2006, and we had a retro I think in 2012 and last year, we've also had the red Thunder colorway of the shoe, and now we have the white Thunder colorway. And to be completely honest, I think the white colorway is probably my favorite of the three. Now obviously I have some nostalgia towards the Thunder 4s, but this white colorway is so much easier to rock. I feel like I've said this for every shoe, but I have a review on this shoe already if you guys want to check it out, uh, linked at the top of the screen. But genuinely, incredible sneaker. Here are my full thoughts up there. 
Um, one of my favorite Jordan 4 releases of the year outside of like the Military Blues and the Bread 4s and probably the Amamanier 4s. Okay, it's, it's, it's in the top five, maybe top 10, but clean sneaker nonetheless. I do think it is going to be a GR, so it's not going to be very difficult to get, but because it's such a clean colorway, I do think there will be some hype for this shoe. And even though it's $215, which is a lot of money for a pair of sneakers, I think this shoe will end up selling out. Then on August 28th, we've got the Air Jordan 17 Low UNC. I really love that not only is Jordan brand bringing back some of their silhouettes that aren't as popular as others, but they're also bringing back colorways that have never re-released. This Air Jordan 17 Low comes with a white leather upper accented by a UNC sock colored thing on the top of the ankle area. You've got a UNC blue midsole and also some silver hits around the sneaker. Now, unfortunately, unlike the pair that we just had that came in the suitcase, this pair does not come in a suitcase. Apparently the suitcase is reserved for the mid top version of the shoe and not the low top version of the shoe. But but still, it's a pair that I think there will be some hype for. I also think it's going to be pretty limited. I'll be honest, I didn't think the last Air Jordan 17s that just retroed would sell out, but they did and they're reselling for a decent amount of money. And because of that, I think the interest in the Air Jordan 17 is higher than I thought. It is definitely a 2000s basketball sneaker and that style is not the most popular right now, but based on the hype of the last pair, I have to assume that this pair will also probably end up selling. Dropping on August 29th, we've got the Alexis Sablon Nike SB Dunk Low Chameleon. Skateboarder Alexis's collaboration comes with a white tumbled leather upper. It definitely makes sense that they're nicknaming this the Chameleons because it's got a chameleon skin style texture. The overlays also come in basically a chameleon color, tonal greens. But what's really cool about this collaboration is like a chameleon, the shoe changes color, but not in the way that you would think. When these chameleon overlays in the upper of the shoe start to get worn down and rubbed away, they actually turn into purple suede. It's a really cool effect and I've never seen color changing done this way before in a pair of Nike Dunks. It's actually fire. I really like this shoe a lot. Apparently Nike and Alexis are also releasing a Converse collaboration, presumably on the same day. It comes in a white leather upper, which wears away to be purple, which is also sick. But I think most sneakerheads out there will probably be drawn more to the Dunks. And because of that, I think the Dunks will be pretty hyped up, not only because they're a Nike SB collab, but also because the wear away is sick. So for that reason, I'm giving the issue a sell. Then dropping on August 31st, we've got the Air Jordan 3 Cement Gray. This shoe is almost a white cement 3, however, it's a little bit different. You've got very dark gray elephant print on the heel, toe, and on the eye stay of the sneaker. The entire upper part of the midsole of the shoe comes in like a medium gray. And then the tongue comes in white with the Jumpman embroidered onto it in bright red. It also has a Jumpman on the heel instead of your Nike Air because obviously it's not an OG colorway. And although it's not an OG colorway, I do think it's very clean and very wearable. That said, I really don't know what the hype is gonna be like on this shoe. I think generally people like the way that this sneaker looks, but will they run out to the store and buy it for $200? I don't know. My guess is that this shoe is gonna be a GR and very widely available. It could sell pretty well for a GR, but at the same time, I don't think Air Jordan 3s are as popular as they once were. And because it's not like a collab or a special colorway, I think the shoe might end up sitting on shelves. That said, it is still a very clean colorway and I could be wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if this shoe ends up sitting and selling for less in retail online. But hey, that pretty much wraps up this really long sit or sell video. Thank you all so much for watching all the way through. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.